Praised be Jesus and Mary. Today's saint, Saint Philip Neri, was born in Florence in 1515, but soon after he moved to Rome at around the age of 20. He was initially studying to be a merchant, but decided to follow um, his vocation to the priesthood and around 1535 moved to Rome. He lived there until about the age of 80 and he merited the title of the Apostle of the Eternal City, the Apostle of Rome, because of all that he did to convert that city, to evangelize it, Rome itself. Father Matthews, a, a member of the religious congregation that St. Philip Neri founded, gives us a good, dense biography of, of St. Philip Neri, especially of the, that part of his life, which was filled with, with the extraordinary graces that God bestowed upon him. At the age of 29, Father Matthews tells us, this was before he was still, he had ordained a priest. St. Philip was ordained at 36. At the age of 29, while praying most earnestly for the gifts and graces of the Holy Spirit, Philip had an extraordinary experience of divine love. And from that time on, there began a palpitation of his heart, which lasted the rest of his life. At times, it became so violent that it shook his chair, his bed, or even his whole room. And even after, he also felt a sense of burning heat in the region of his heart and throat, so that he was always trying to keep cool by opening windows and unbuttoning his cassock, even in the winter. And it can get pretty cold in Rome, even in the winter. After his death, his heart was found to be so enlarged that the two ribs over his heart were broken and arched outwards. On fire with the love of God, Philip converted and sanctified innumerable souls by preaching in the marketplaces of Rome, by hearing confessions and directing souls, by counseling bishops and even popes, by caring for the sick in the primitive hospitals of the day, by ministering to needy pilgrims and by performing miracles. He is even known to have raised a young boy from the dead as well as by going to search out wayward souls who did not recognize their own spiritual need. Thus it was that he earned the title of Apostle of Rome. Philip was also that day's greatest practical joker, but always with a point to be learned. Even this was a tool in his hands for evangelizing. The distinctive mark of his apostolate was cheerfulness, I will have no melancholy, no low spirits in my house, he used to say. He was known to help many a person out of depression. Everyone was captivated by his supernatural charm, and during his lifetime, all Rome venerated him as a saint, consulted him as a guide, and almost ceased to wonder at his many miracles. By all that he did to sanctify Rome, St. Philip Neri exerted an incalculable influence for good upon the universal church, which owes him even to our time a debt of unimaginable gratitude. At the beginning of the 16th century, Rome was corrupt and lukewarm, and the people lived in a state of spiritual laxity, including many of the clergy. But by the end of the century, when St. Philip's work was done, Rome was a different city, largely because of this saint. St. Philip reminds us that uh, Christianity, living the gospel, living our Lord's commandments, his holy law, practicing virtue is is not incompatible with, with joy. In fact, it causes true joy. And he had that beautiful joy that comes from the freedom of being children of God, knowing that all things are created by God for us. All things are created for us, but we are created for God. So all these things we have to use according to God's holy law for them to be beneficial to us and to bring us true joy. And he also reminds us at the same time that Christian joy is not incompatible with with mortification, with penance, with suffering. It's kind of that paradoxical gospel that that we read today. We will grieve, but our grief will become joy. Because Christian joy, even for St. Philip Neri, it cost him. He had to acquire it, this Christian joy. 
which is not empty, it's not worldly. It's not just having everything that we feel drawn to, which is pleasure, not necessarily joy, but possessing that which is truly good, knowing what good is, enlightened by faith, and possessing it. And to possess it, possess what's truly good, we often have to reject evil and the pleasure that it offers. And then beyond that, to acquire sanctity, we have to even know how to sacrifice and renounce what's merely good or a lesser good for a greater good, for what's better. We must simply know how to sacrifice disordinate attractions, which cause pleasure maybe, but not joy. So to have this Christian joy, which St. Philip Neri had, we have to seek like he did what pleases God and avoid what offends him. And in this we'll find more joy than any worldly pleasure can offer. He had a lot of sayings, St. Philip Neri, and one with which we conclude was this beautiful one. He used to work with a lot of young adults. He would tell them, laugh, joke, have all the fun you want, just don't offend God while doing it. So we too. We realize that being Christians doesn't deprive us of joy. God doesn't want to deprive us of joy, but he wants to give us true joy, which has its parameters, which are his holy commandments, his law, which allows us to use creatures the way they're supposed to be used for our good, for our advantage, for our true joy in this world and even in the next. Praise be Jesus and Mary.